So Kamili, thank you so much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you on the show. And Kamili, before we walk into the future, can you please tell us a little bit about your background? Where, where did you grow up? I'm from Durban, so the east coast of South Africa. From a small town, actually, on the north coast of the east coast, ironically, um, which is called Tongats. Right. And tell us, what was your dream career when you grew up? So believe it or not, my dream career, up until I was probably around like 17, was I wanted to create designer handbags and live in a loft in New York. That was my plan. <laughs> and uh, who inspired you in your early days? Um, in my early days, I think my, my family play a huge role. So I come from a host of strong women. And also I, I grew up in a family where I had two working parents. So they definitely gave me the benchmark around, you know, like really strong work ethic and making sure that everything you do is going to come if you really work hard and, and building that resilience and almost ambition. All right. Now, Kamini, today you're leading a very impressive leadership career. Looking back over your journey, would you say there was a turning point or maybe a number of turning points? Yeah, I mean, from my side, a turning point in marketing was probably when I was at Unilever. So I joined Unilever in the customer development uh, side of the organization, not in marketing. And um, all my managers and everybody knew I was really passionate about marketing, but they also wanted me to fully explore customer development before I moved into marketing. And um, I, I went through that quite, a, I did three roles, uh, probably a, of around four years uh, in Unilever in customer development. And I really was still set on marketing. Um, they tried to convince me even with promotions in customer development, but I was still sticking to my guns that I really wanted to go to marketing. And that's where it was a turning point because I had to accept that I was going to go at a more junior level to marketing because I'm following my passion rather than chasing a title, which I did. And I mean, I still got, I got a promotion in marketing within 11 months, but I still made that decision. And I think that was the turning point where I had to realize and accept and also be okay with following experiences and not chasing titles. And that's super difficult when you're young and ambitious and really want to get all the manager titles, senior manager, director, all these wonderful things to actually pause and follow what you want in an experience more than a title was, I would say, my turning point. Now, Kamini, what would you say is driving you today? So quite honestly, I'm a new mom. So uh, my daughter is a, just over a year and a half and if you had to ask me this question before her it would be totally a selfish answer on what I want and what I'm looking for and all the experiences that completely just satisfy harmony and now as I move into an era where I'm a mother and a working mother things have changed and now the driving force for me is how do I choose roles and select opportunities that give me Firstly, the financial freedom to give my daughter every opportunity that I can give her. But secondly, the work-life balance and uh, organizations like MasterCard really support and nurture environments of work-life balance, which allows me to have the flexibility to be a very present mom, but also work and be part of an organization that's constantly growing. Now, Kamini, looking into the future, and I know it's a big question, but what does the future of leadership mean to you? Yeah, it is a big question. And, you know, as I was thinking about this question, I mean, it's the it's the title of most of your uh, sessions and interviews as well. For me, this is around two parts. The one is on adaptability and the other, the other is on inclusivity. So from an adaptability perspective, we live, work, and, and 
thrive or survive, depending on where you want to look at it, in an ever-changing technology-based environment. So adaptability in the sense of being able to constantly learn and allow yourself to engage and grow with technology is definitely an aspect of any leader. And whether you're a self-contributor or a people leader, this is something that we have to be okay with and comfortable with and grow and learn with. Um, and then the other element for me is on inclusivity and really focusing on making sure you're creating an environment that allows people to feel like their authentic self, bring their authentic self to work. So that's where you unlock like real creativity, real magic is super important. And I think if you're able to grasp and own these types of skill sets, you'll be able to foster a great space for people to grow, but also allow yourself to be a strong leader in whatever field you're in. Now, Kamini, what have you learned from your own leadership journey that you consider most important for building future leaders? In other words, what do we? What is it we have to do more to build and develop future leaders? Yeah, look, from my side, again, diversity is something that will play a very big role here. Um, and there's a couple of aspects of diversity. The one is around um, generational diversity, because we have Gen Zs moving into the workplace now. The baby boomers are here as well. And then there's millennials and Gen X. So we have four generations of people that have all grown up in very different environments that are all trying to work together. And that is a huge part of diversity that we must address and make sure that we're able to communicate. The Gen Zs are looking for a very specific type of environment and they won't accept things that potentially a millennial accepted or even a Gen X accepted. It's a very different group of people that I think is going to bring a very fresh experience into the workplace. And it's something that we all need to embrace, but also understand how the different generations work so we can so we can really work together. And then the other aspect, I mean, from a South African perspective, diversity covers several aspects. So we've spoken about generational diversity, there's racial diversity, and there's also gender diversity. I fully believe in order to really serve the community that you operate in or work for, or the consumer base that you're serving, you need to have people that actually understand that and, and are able to unlock those types of insights that those consumers require. Uh, to do that, you need diversity. So it doesn't mean a specific race. It means making sure that you've got a reflective team that are serving I've got team members across the continent in Morocco, Kenya, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, and South Africa. And it's really in terms of making sure that this cohort can serve the African consumer as best that we can. And then the third element is about gender balance and making sure that we really have a space for women to feel like their authentic self and that can come to the foreground. I don't think we have enough women in leadership positions. I think the stat in South Africa is under 20% of senior exec roles are filled by women. So this is a huge part of the future of leadership and making sure that we are able to support the growth of our talent by making sure they can see people that they identify with. Now, Kamini, these are challenging times as the world is stumbling from one crisis into the next, what is your advice for future leaders in terms of challenges? What are some of the biggest challenges they should expect to encounter and hopefully overcome in their career? Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, Dr. Nick, these, these will be big conversations that they have. I mean, even in my own career, I've faced multiple challenges. I think the biggest thing you can do is make sure that you are clear on who you are and you're able to at least voice your authentic self in the workplace because that's when you're able to really engage with people on a one-to-one -one level. It, it's a big challenge. I don't think enough people are being authentic when they come into the workplace, especially in the corporate environment. So that would be one of my biggest challenges that we must have uh, people focus on. And honestly, I think this Gen Z 
era that is coming into the workplace will definitely help balance that because it's one of our biggest challenges. That's what drives the diversity challenge we have. Um, and it's something that we must we must be able to address. Well, Kamini, if you were to design a curriculum for future leaders, what are some of the key skills that you would want to factor in and maybe even teach? Yeah, so, I mean, I'll even speak from a MasterCard side. When we look at hiring talent, there's two aspects that we do look at, and it's IQ and EQ. So we want to make sure that we're getting our strongest functional talent, but we also want to make sure that we're hiring talent that is able to lead and bring an inclusive environment in the organization. And that's where the empathy comes in and the EQ aspect. But there's another aspect that MasterCard also focuses on, which is the DQ, and that's the decency quotient. And that's where I know <laughs> I love the, I love the phrase and um, I learned it when I was here at MasterCard as well. Um, but it's really around how do we make sure that we show up every day and we're a good human to each other? Because that's the aspect that's going to make us all thrive and make us enjoy the workplace. And um, I think that's probably my biggest uh, type of advice for this. Focus on your IQ, functionally competent skills. Um, it's something that's always needed and the resilience in making sure that you build those skills are important for your growth. The EQ in making sure that you're able to understand human beings and understand your people. And then the DQ in terms of how do you speak to each other and, and you're bringing your best self, but you're also bringing a really and creating a really great environment in the office. That's your DQ. Uh, is there any way to measure this? Do you have measurements? Do you maybe have a scorecard? Um, not a specific scorecard. Uh, we talk about the concept uh, more holistically in terms of the DQ and uh, making sure that you bring that aspect in. We also are very much at MasterCard around the what's and the hows, and the hows focus on the MasterCard way, but also how you bring yourself and how you show up every day. So it's not a specific measure, more in terms of how you show up. Okay, great. Now, Kamini... As a mentor to many future leaders, can you maybe share um, a moment where you mentored an upcoming leader and that person took your advice to heart? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the examples of this space is really around backing yourself. And as a woman, it's really difficult. I think women consistently have imposter syndrome, and that's something that I personally struggle with as well, where we never think that we're good enough. So it comes into every aspect of corporate life, even from the fact that male, men are hired on potential and how they're able to talk the talk when they're in interviews and women are hired on performance and what they've actually delivered. And making that change to switch, almost like find the middle ground between performance and potential is something that's really big. Um, the aspect that I'm talking about is with a with a woman, um, and she was and still is delivering a lot of activities, so much more than what her grade or level was. She struggled with how does she manage upwards to her stakeholders and line managers in terms of telling them what she wants. So my coaching was over probably about six months in terms of making sure that you drive your own career and you actually tell people what you want. So it was a series of coaches, but I can say towards the end, she was able to articulate herself, actually um, put forward an organogram of how she'd like her function to grow. She was promoted as well through that and hired someone and she is now a people manager. So this comes with, I mean, I didn't really do anything physically. It was all her work. All I did was make sure I unlocked that part of her that's able to be confident and be able to, ask people for what she wants. Now, Kamini, looking back over your own leadership journey, are there any role models of leadership that you have encountered and maybe worked with that you would recommend future leaders should learn from? So this question is interesting and there's a couple aspects in it. So the one is, I think all of us are able to build our own leadership skill and capability from the industry. So there's amazing global mentors on leadership that you can look for. I've read countless books across Simon Sinek, Renee Brown, Sheryl Sandberg, 
And all these people play huge roles in how I shape my own leadership. In addition to that, throughout my career, I mean, I've worked at several multi multinationals. Uh, Unilever played a huge foundational role in leadership. Um, they spend a lot of their time and effort and energy to developing young talent and growing people leaders. Uh, that was that that honestly, from every aspect, has been my strongest pillar in leadership. To the point where, for new managers, Unilever had a little group where we could meet every month and talk about our challenges of people leadership. And we all sat there for the first time. We were all people managers, complaining about how we could do something quicker than the person that we have managing. And this is so frustrating and why does it take so long? And, and Unilever's leadership also explained to us there, that's why we've been selected to be people managers because we have the skill. And now it's term, time that we transfer the skill and make sure that we're growing the next set of leaders. So that really like built my foundation of leadership. And as I went through, organize, like I've, been, I've worked at Coke before MasterCard as well, um, the leaders that I experienced in both Coke and MasterCard has fundamentally shaped it. So it's personal leadership uh, in this view uh, that has really grown um, my my own style. I mean, I remember my uh, manager at, at Coca-Cola, Michelle Pace, she always spoke around leading with grit and grace. And I it has stuck with me throughout my career because it's really talking about the functional competency of the grit and also the difficulty of working in 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 corporate, but also with grace and how we show up and how we bring ourselves forward. And it's a huge aspect of what's shaped me, but I have had the pleasure of having multiple leaders in my career that's that's really grown and shaped my career. Finally, Kavili, how can our listeners connect with you and where should they follow you? So I'm very active on LinkedIn. I think that's probably the best place to connect with me. I do regularly engage and, and contribute to various topics on LinkedIn. Also, I'm happy to receive uh, direct messages on anything to do with leadership. If you have any questions, if you want my help, um, I'm very supportive. And I also really want to see African talent growing and African talent being seen across the globe because we do have an exceptional work ethic and strong base of people right on this continent that deserves to be seen on a global stage. So my life's mission in the corporate industry, most definitely, is to really support, promote, and grow African talent. Now, last but not least, Kamini, what is your message to the millions of learners out there who are about to finish school, start a career? What are maybe one or two success principles that they should keep in mind? So when I started working, um, I, I couldn't find a job for about a year. I was unemployed. And I think a lot of South Africans fa face the same space when we come out of university fresh. The one aspect is a lot of the global companies and local companies offer graduate programs. And I would definitely encourage any graduate coming out of um, college to try and get on these grad programs. The other aspect is I, I did not join a grad program for fresh out of school. I went to or fresh out of university. I joined Nielsen as a research um, support analyst. And I remember I had been not working and not studying for a year before I got that interview. And there was a maths test and you needed to get 80 percent in order to pass the maths test and join Nielsen. And I didn't. I got, I think, about 75 or 76, something like that. And I went to the boss and I was just laying out my sad story on how it was all because I, I forgot how to do the growth um, calculation. And she listened to my entire story. But then she offered me a role lower than the one that I'd applied for. So the one I'd applied for was a, a client service exec. She hired me as a support exec. And I think that fundamentally changed how I show up as well. I realized you're going to have to put the work in in order to receive the benefits out. And I think that's probably the biggest skill. Nothing is coming free. There's no such thing as a free lunch, as we have always learned. Um, and I learned that the hard way at a, the very start of my career. So resilience, work hard, bring the ethics in and work ethic, but also your personal ethics into the organization and your authentic self. And you will thrive. You will grow. 
um, I know it's difficult, especially at the start, but make sure you're choosing opportunities that support the experiences you want rather than chasing the titles because the titles will come. Your career is a jungle gym. It's not a ladder. It's also from one of my wonderful global mentors uh, that shared that, but it's fundamentally true. So make sure that you're choosing opportunities that grow the experience you want and not just the title. Well, Kamini, thank you so much for sharing your insights and your wisdom into the future of leadership and uh, inspiring us all to, uh, to apply the DQ. My pleasure. Thank you so much.